Coming to you live with all the sports action from around the UP. Welcome to Friday Night, Night Frenzy. Frenzy. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Friday Night Frenzy, which is presented by the Venice Pub and Pizzeria of Ishpeming. I'm Jerry Taylor. Week one of the girls' high school basketball season is in the books. Let's check out the action from the hard court this evening. We begin the frenzy in Miners Country with a mid-pen conference battle between Manistique and Nagani. The Miners had a comfortable lead in the third quarter, but Manistique's offense came to life. Allie Nagy stopped, pops, and drops the jumper from the elbow. Off a Miners miss, here come the Emeralds again. Brianna Bosnick looks up the floor and goes end to end with the pass. Leah Cook finishes at the other end. And the Emeralds weren't done just yet. Bosnick goes left in the crossover, puts it up, and puts it in with their left hand. Manistique got to within 12 points. Miners head coach Brandon Sager called the timeout. After the 60-second break, Nagani works the ball around to Courtney Finola. She hits the mid-range J. Finola would have the hot hand for Nagani in the third. She hits another jumper coming up here, and Nagani would hold on for the 57-41 victory tonight over Manistique. A quick car trip down US 41 takes us next to West Ishpeming as the Kingsford Flivers battled Westwood in a non-conference contest. First quarter, the Patriots move the ball around quickly. Caitlin Hewitt finds Katie Rankin in the low post. Rankin goes off the glass and in. Westwood had a two-point lead. The Patriots' full court pressure paid off early and often. Lizzie Van Buren, Duke not LVB, two plus one is three the hard way. And Westwood had a 10-point lead. Duke not finished with 17 points. The Flivers would eventually get their offense in gear. Jalen Jennings quickly finds Amber Larson. She absorbs the contact and still finds the bottom of the bucket. Later, more from Larson. This time, she kicks it out to Annika Erickson, who tickles the twine for the Deuce. Westwood had a lead after the first quarter, and they would go on to defeat Kingsford tonight by the final of 65-41. to Caitlin Hewitt also with 17 points for the Patriots. To the scoreboards, Houghton wins big over Iron Mountain. Elisa Jermu had 25 points for the Gremlins. Kelly Met was too much for Dollar Bay, 70-33. Chastel defeats Republican Michigami by 20, and Kristen Divitella had 12 points for the Panthers as they defeat. There's Chastel wins over Republic Michigami. And Ontonagan slipped past Waters meet 49 to 39. Back to the highlights, the Braves and Mile Town are tangled in Gwyn this evening. First quarter belong to the Disney Braves. Gladstone shares the rock early and often. Jess Boudry bounces it over to Callie Jensen, who takes care of the rest. 6-0 Gladstone. Later in the quarter, the Braves move the ball around the horn again, and a Wolf couldn't hit the jumper here, but Lexi Hungisto was there for the board and the putback. The second quarter was much better for the hometown mile counters. Mackenzie Hollins dishes it to Jordan Hutchins, top the key for three, and it's good, and Gwynn was on the scoreboard. The three parade for the mile counters continued in the second from the far side of the court. Bella Weedig would drain the triple, but Gladstone was just too much for Gwynn tonight. The Braves are 2-0 after a 56-41 road victory. Back to the scoreboards, behind 29 points tonight from Tiffany Wagner in. Stevenson wins at North Dickinson 66-52. Mid-Peninsula was a three ball better tonight than Carney Nato 39-36. And it was North Central 51, Rapid River 28. To the final girls basketball highlight of the evening, Forest Park traveled to Harris to take on the Broncos. First quarter, Lexi Gusser, you may have heard of her by now, makes the easy lane to put her team up two points. The Broncos, though, came to play early in this one. Jordan Harney goes across the court to Caitlin Frazier. She's wide open for three, and she hits it. Park River had a one-point lead. Off the Forest Park miss, Hannah Starnes ahead to Frazier. She finds Mackenzie Lund for the hoop and the harm. Pulling the Broncos back to within a single point. Forest Park began to pull away late in the quarter. Adele Isaacson finds Kendra Campbell off the inbounds pass for the bucket. And Forest Park would roll to a big win, 70-38 tonight over the Broncos. Back to the scores. Newberry picks up a 51-38 win at Munising. Superior Central wins easily at Big Bay Tanakh, 63-19. Marquette, playing in the Petoskey Invitational, defeated St. Ignace 55-44. Hunter Vidala and Destiny Beckwith, each with 18 tonight for Ben Smith and the Redettes. And welcome back to the Frenzy, presented by the Venice Pub and Pizzeria of Ishpemin. The Michigan Tech hockey team was back at home tonight after spending the last two weeks playing in Alaska. Second period, still no score. The Beavers with the puck in the Husky zone. Cody Ward beats Phoenix Copley to make it 1-0 Bemidji State. 
Now let's go to the third. The Huskies would finally light the lamp early in the period. Daniel Holmberg goes blocker side high past Jesse Wilkins. And Holmberg ties the game at one. Just 37 seconds later, Tech comes right back thanks to a funny bounce. And I mean a funny bounce off the boards. Mike Neville finds C.J. Ike on the near side for the goal. And Tech took their first lead of the game at 2-1. Under three minutes later, Tech looking for another goal. Cliff Watson, oh boy, a stick to shatters there as he tries to shoot the puck. Here come the Beavers the other way. Cody Ward would flip one on net, and it fools a screen Copley that tied the game at two. And that goal proved to be huge as the game finished in a two-two tie. I was concerned about the Alaska trip and having the energy, but I thought our team played with a lot of energy today and really pushed the pace of the game. So as much as I want two points, it's important that we keep uh, getting points and, and, and moving forward. Every night is just a just a battle defensively and every team's systems are so well that the game is just locked down and if, if you don't get one on the one or two on the power play, you know, it's tough to get five on five goals right now in this league. I mean with every team, every every game's a one goal game. Can't get it outside of the zone. A good game tonight and hoping the situation down low to play against tomorrow night at 7 7 p.m. Across the WCHA, Northern Michigan loses tonight at Minnesota State Mankato 3-2. Reed Seckel and Saint Shane Suth had both the goals for NMU. Ferris State continues its winning ways as the Bulldogs win at Lake State 5-3. Bowling Green shut out Alabama Huntsville at home 3-0. And up north, the puck just dropped for the Alaska Airlines Governor's Cup between Alaska Fairbanks and Alaska Anchorage. Back to the goods in the Sioux. Marquette took on the Blue Devils. 79 seconds in, the Blue Devils on the board. Justin Isle with the goal. 1-0 Eagles. Two minutes later, the Redmen's Brock Smith steals the puck. Thinks he's got an easy goal, but denied there by Nick McKenzie. Off the rejection, McKenzie would deny another shot. Let's go later in the first period. The Sioux's Will Golfier finds Ben Lacrosse at the blue line, and he snaps in to put the Blue Devils up 2-0. The blue and white looking very sharp tonight, and a 6-0 shutout win over the Redmen. In Houghton, the Gremlins fell to Bloomfield Hills, Cranbrook 5-1. Sean Maletic scored all five goals for Cranbrook. He is a future University of Michigan hockey player for Mr. Red Berenson. Traverse City West scored two goals in the third to defeat Calumet 3-1. At Hancock, the Bulldogs picked up a victory. They outlast Traverse City Central 6-4 to get the W. The Marquette Royals have now won 24 straight games. After defeating the Wisconsin Rampage tonight 11-6 at Lakeview, Royals forward Dallas McLaughlin had six goals and two assists and 8.9 for the Marquette native.